Hey, hey, internet bestie. I'm currently starting to do my makeup, getting ready for another YouTube video, and I figured why not turn on the camera and do a get ready with me while discussing period pain. So here we are. Now, full disclaimer, I've only recently started doing my own makeup, so don't come for me in the comments about my technique. My friend Kim, who's really good at makeup, taught me some things, but I wasn't paying attention to everything. I'm not as good as her. We're going to discuss period pain, though, so how I'm doing this doesn't matter. Also, I fully thought that GRWM, get ready with me, meant grown woman. Yeah, I'm part of the Beyonce era, and that's the song that immediately came to mind when I started seeing that hashtag trend. All right, let's move right along. Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to be looking at the camera or looking at myself to make sure I know what I'm doing, but we'll be fine. So, period pain. It's very real and affects so many people, but although it's very common, it is not normal. I'm going to say that again. While period pain is super common, it is not normal. Maybe we'll grab my favorite yellow. Period pain is common, but it is not normal. And I mean, some level of discomfort can be expected simply because of the nature of how period pain arises, right? It's literally your uterus contracting and shedding its lining due to something called prostaglandins and you know I could I've had plenty of videos discussing the whole thing but you know there is some expectation for some discomfort but the crippling pain that has you bent over and unable to do any of the work that is the part that's super common especially amongst us in the black community but it's not normal and honestly I wish this was something I knew when I was younger because I thought it was really normal to have super heavy flow as well as having a painful period it wasn't until I got older that I realized that that is not how it's supposed to be and I mean back then I was eating a lot of junk and not enough nutrient-dense foods rich in things like iron and magnesium and calcium and the B vitamins and you know all of that and while I'm an island girl born and raised in Bermuda and there's plenty of sun there I was in the classroom most days so I didn't get enough vitamin D I don't think either it's gonna come together I promise I don't think people give enough credit to what we're putting in our bodies and the effect it has on our hormones, the effect it has on the functioning of our body. This is looking a hot mess. I'm gonna face this way and do it in my regular mirror. And I would turn you this way, but then you'll get an ugly big ring light. I know you already see it behind me, so you'll see it in the mirror reflecting and that's distracting. So yeah, the things we eat have a big impact. You know, we often wonder about the items in our skincare and the things we're putting on our bodies topically, but very seldomly are we actually considering the things that we're putting inside of our bodies and the impact it has on our day-to-day -day lives. Hold up, let me focus on this eyeliner real quick. Okay, I'm back. Do my eyeliner by myself is embarrassing, but doing it in front of y'all is even worse. So anyway, back to vitamin D. Do you know that low vitamin D levels may impact your menstrual cycle by prolonging your follicular phase and delaying ovulation? This ring light is so bright, it's so hard to tell what I'm actually doing. Whose brilliant idea was this? Something like a billion people have a vitamin D deficiency and 50% of the world's population has a vitamin D insufficiency. And if you're here thinking, oh, that's not too bad, where well, I'm sure where I am, it's, you know, a little better than that. The stats are something like 35% of the adult population in the U.S. have a vitamin D deficiency as well. So it's pretty bad everywhere. And often people think spending a couple minutes in the sun is enough on a daily basis to help with that. But the reality is us as more melanin are at even higher risk of having a low vitamin D level. I used to think that me being black and being born on an island was enough for me to have enough vitamin D. That's until I learned higher presence of melanin in your body actually reduces your body's ability to produce vitamin D. In other words, if you're a melanin-rich beauty and you're spending time with your friends who don't have as much melanin in them and they're in the sun for 20 minutes and you're in the sun for 20 minutes, you're producing a lot less vitamin D. I don't know what possessed me to do a get ready with me and I already struggled to try to do my makeup. Hmm. Let's see. Let's do some lips. What color? I'm going to do my... So yeah, knowing what I know now, why would I think this is smart to talk while doing my liner? Do you hear that? Sounds like water running in the other bathroom. This is just great. This is not what my friend Kim taught me. She said, don't put your liner all the way to your end. Pull down your frown or something like that. She's an expert. I'm not. I also don't listen very much. So there's that. <laughs> 
So anyway, know what I know now. I would have supplemented a lot sooner. But anyway, back to the point. Vitamins like vitamin D, B1, B6, B12 can all be helpful for your period. And incorporating as many foods that have those things in them is even better. But that along with incorporating exercise and drinking more water, it all matters, you know? But here's my disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional, though I work alongside a bunch of them. And I know a lot about a lot. So before doing anything, especially, you know, adding supplements and all of that, into your daily routine, by all means, consult a professional. And of course, if you have like PCOS or endometriosis, this is gonna be something completely different, right? So by all means, follow the guidance you've been given. My heart really does go out for those of you who are suffering with that. I just really wanted to bring awareness to the fact that period pain while common is not normal. And I actually went into a whole lot more detail and in diving into the symptoms along with not just period pain, but the types, right? So the cramping as well as, you know, even heavier flow and all the other common period symptoms that are not normal. So you should probably just watch that video. But I have to tell you that that was at a time when my ring light broke and my mic was trash actually i had no mic so the audio was really bad but it's so much great content and to be honest i think you should be supporting this quick glow up of lighting and audio right now by subscribing and hitting that like button i'm joking of course but not really. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up because what it really does is show YouTube that this is something people want to see and they'll share it with more people who can learn and benefit from it. Now off to film another video. We'll chat next time. Bye-bye. This video is a bit like Inception because it's a video inside of a video. Well, not really. I didn't remember much from Inception other than the ending and I was confused. So there was that. What am I doing? I'm doing my real marathon. Along with the... Oh, what happened there?